Hey, what's going on in there? Susie's concentrating. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Of course not, silly. She's thinking important literary thoughts. You mean she's still working on that article for New Feature magazine? Mm-hmm. Isn't it wonderful, our Susie being picked out of six secretaries to write an article on how to handle the boss? That's pretty soft. 500 bucks for 100 words. That's five dollars a word. A genius in our midst. Yeah, well, even geniuses have to eat. <laughs> oh, hello. Wooing the muse, Susie dear? Wooing it, but not wowing it. Isn't the inspiration flowing? Like glue. After six days over this hot typewriter, I've come up with exactly eight words I'm satisfied with. How to Handle the Boss by Susan McNamara. Hey, make it Susan Camille McNamara. Another word, another five bucks. What seems to be the trouble? Arthritis in all ten fingers. I know what I want to say, but when I try to write it down, it comes out as inspired as a plate of stale popovers. Uh, what you need is nourishment. I brought you today's blue plate special. Fish cakes. Oh. Fish is brain food, Susie. Maybe it will help. You mean all Shakespeare had to do was eat a fish cake that came up with Hamlet? Now, you'll get it, Susie. But I've got to get it by 6 o'clock tonight. That's the deadline. The five-star final deadline. <laughs> hey, Susie, are you going to mention me and Vi? Well, of course. How could I write an article about this office without mentioning you two? Besides, Vi Praskins and Tommy Simpson make four or more words. <laughs> Come on, Tommy. She needs peace and quiet. Now, you just keep thinking, Susie. The muse will come. <laughs> I hate to disturb our office genius with mundane business routine, but may I inquire if you type those contracts for Ivy Warren? Well, not yet, Mr. Sands, but I'll have them in just a few minutes. Miss McNamara, you were going to have those contracts in a minute, yesterday noon. I know, Mr. Sands, but I've been trying to finish this article. It has to be done at 6 o'clock tonight. And I have to have those contracts now. Oh. But if you only knew the nice things I'm saying about you. How to Handle the Boss by Susan McNamara. I'm Susan McNamara, and I have the best boss in the world. Generous, kind, understanding, tolerant. Oh. Did, uh, did you really say that, Susan? Oh, well, I'm trying to. <laughs> oh, and uh, you don't mind if I mention that you're very good looking, do you? Oh. Well, let's, let's not get carried away, Susie. Uh, now, where was I? Well, you were very angry with me, but I talked you out of it. The photographer's here. We don't want any. Well, he's for Susie from New Feature magazine. You Susan McNamara? Oh, yes, that's right. Are you her boss? That is a moot question. <laughs> now, I can use you in one of the shots. Mr. Moot? <laughs> name is Sands. Yes, well, I'll get all that later. Now, let's see, uh, what can we shoot? Well, how about Mr. Sands dictating to me? Oh, very original. <laughs> all right, Mr. Sands, just step around over here, please. All righty. <laughs> In back of her? Oh. <laughs> People give me the creeps. Look, how long is this going to take? Well, I once spent three weeks shooting a factory in Pittsburgh. <laughs> okay, hold it. You can go now. Thank you very much. <laughs> now let's get one of you uh, slaving over the typewriter. All right, but if you come around here, I think you get a better shot oh, of right. my side. Now, let me see, I better straighten up the desk a little bit, so it's a little better. Hi. Hello, Tony. Tell me, are you still going around with that big wheel? Well, I don't know what big wheel you mean. Ferris wheel, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, you and your corny jokes. <laughs> How is the woman I love? Well, if you mean Susie, she's busy with her writing. Writing? An article she's been asked to do for New Feature magazine. Oh. Competition, eh? No wonder an ace reporter, a professional writer like myself can't even get a job. Tony Kirkland, can't you read that side? I, I won't let you through this door. 
<laughs> Do not disturb. Mm -hmm. All right, then I'll fly through the window. The poor man's Peter Pan. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, lady. Is uh, that man bothering you? No, but you are. <laughs> well, is that all you're going to take? No, well, that wraps it up. Oh, but that last shot wasn't any good. It... Lady, if you want pretty pictures, go to a portrait photographer. That's what I like about photographing machinery. At least you don't have to put up with any beefs from a blast furnace. <laughs> Can't you just see him doing a ten? series on the private life of a steam turbine. Tony, I need you today like a hole in the head. I already have one where my brain ought to be. Ah, oh, Susie, you can't do this to me. I've come all the way up here to, to weep on the loveliest shoulder in town. And to perhaps negotiate a small loan till I can get another job. Have we lost our little job again? Mm -hmm. Drum right out of the city room. Asked Return in my press card. And what brilliant bit of clowning backfired this time? Mm, just those stories I fed the society editor about uh, Sir Simeon of Twelve Trees leaving Africa to live in the United States. <laughs> you know, uh, I was getting quite a build-up for Sir Simeon until I found out he was a new ape at the Central Park Zoo. Tony, when are you ever going to grow up? As soon as you marry me. Not today. Oh, I'm a little Lamara. I have got to finish this article. The article? Oh, yes, yes. Vi told me about your being an author. Trying to be. And I've got just four hours left to make it. How to handle the boss? <laughs> What's so hard about that? Oh, everything. When I think of those thousands of people that are going to read this article, I get goose pimples instead of ideas. <laughs> Writer's fright, my dear. A very common disease, especially with amateurs. Mm. <laughs> Why don't you let me help you? Yes, you could, couldn't you? No, that wouldn't be ethical. Well, what's unethical about it? People use ghost writers all the time. Yes, they do, don't they? And if I gave you part of what I was making, we could make it sort of a collaboration, couldn't we? That's right. And it would save me the embarrassment of having to borrow money from a lady. Yes, Mr. Sand? Susie, are those contracts ready? Uh, they'll be right in. Tony, it's a deal. Fine. Fine. I know. I'll start right away with the adjectives, the adverbs. I might even throw in a couple of metaphors. Well, now, don't make it too fancy, because you know I wouldn't write it. Uh. Leave it to me. Oh. Right. See, how about this for a start? The private life of a private secretary. The secrets of Susie. That's pretty good. And don't forget to mention Vi Praskins. You know Vi. Hmm? And Tommy Simpson. Also write something very flattering about Mr. Sands. He's a wonderful boss. Oh. 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 Oh, Mr. Sands, uh, this is Tony Kirkland, an old friend of mine. This is hardly the day to be greeting old friends, Miss McNamara. Now, take those contracts in the office and we'll work them out together. Yes, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Get the cost sheets, the file on Ivy, the file on Nat Wilson, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And clean up this desk. Yes, yes, sir. Excuse me. You need a Geiger counter to find anything on uh -huh. it. Yes, sir. Now, let's get going. Yes, sir. And stop saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. <laughs> Well, this just isn't his day. Now, come on, do the story and try to make it good, will you, Tony? Please, writing is my business. Except when it interferes with your pleasure. Susie, come in here. Coming, sir. Go on, now, write. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I'm about 
about to tell all reveal the private life of a private secretary, Secrets of Susan. <sighs> Bertha, the sewing machine girl, had it easy compared to Susie, the slave. <laughs> work in a jute mill, laughingly called International Artist. The overseer named Peter Sands is a direct descendant of Simon Legree. Well, that's terrible. <coughs> Why, you... Tony, what are you doing? Why, how can you do this? What's the matter? What's the matter? Well, look, look what you've written here. Violet Paskins, beat, bothered, and befuddled. Tommy Simpson, a real gone goon. Oh, come on now, Susie. I was just trying to get a rise out of you. Get a rise out of me? Well, you certainly get you and your practical jokes. Well, that's what I would give them. But uh, as long as I'm sending it for you, here. Read this. <laughs> Well, this is more like it. You know, Tony, if you spend as much time on the job as you do planning practical jokes, you might amount to something. It wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> no, you haven't even finished this. It uh, gets better as you go along. Oh, I haven't got time for your jokes. I've got to finish all that work over there, and I've got to get this down to the new feature magazine office. Well, I'll take it down for you. It's on my way. Oh, would you? Hmm? I'll be finished in just a minute. Oh, this is good, Tony. <clears throat> this is very good. <laughs> now, remember, the deadline is 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, how about a dateline after the deadline? Well, tomorrow, honey. Mm. That's the history of my life. Everything is tomorrow. The manana ain't bad. Mr. Sam, do you know where Susie is? She's at Ivy Warren. Oh, well, this just came from New Feature Magazine. The boy said it's galley proof, and if Susie has any changes to make, she has to get it in before 12. She'll be back soon. I'm just dying to know what she said about me. <laughs> of course, we mustn't open it. <laughs> oh, no, my, that wouldn't be right. Aren't you curious to know what she said about you? Well, uh... <laughs> Maybe Susie would like me to look over her copy. I'm sure she would. Just for corrections, of course. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Sands, what's the matter? Listen to this. I work in a jute mill laughingly called International Artists. The overseer's name is Peter Sands, a direct descendant of Simon Legree. Mr. Sands. That's only the beginning. Wait till you hear what she says about you. Violet Praskin, beat, bothered, and befuddled. Oh! Tommy Simpson, a real gone goon. Did Susie really write that? It's right here, right under her name. When Miss McNamara returns, tell her I want to see her immediately. I most certainly will. <gasps> oh! But, but that's exactly what it said. Tommy Simpson, a real gone goon. <laughs> I'll stab in the back. Hi, everybody. Miss McNamara, if you have anything to say to me, I prefer not to hear it. It's a business matter. You can communicate it to me in writing. But, Ma, what's the matter? I'm quite sure you know. Tommy? Well, what's with you? What's wrong? Miss McNamara, you may take that up with my lawyer. I intend to sue. And Mr. Sands wants to see you in his office. Immediately. Did you want to see me? I certainly did. Nice going, Miss McNamara. Now, why is everybody talking in riddles? We have had a preview of your little masterpiece. I'm surprised you even came back to the jute mill and Simon Lee Green. Simon Lee Green, let me see those. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And why, you had to pick on poor Vi, who loves you like a sister. I... 
I think the end is particularly charming. And while I use kid gloves in handling my boss, what he really deserves is boxing gloves. Oh, but this is a terrible mistake. That is the understatement of the year. But it's Tony Kirkland. He wrote this. Oh, how could he do this to me? To you? What about me? What are my friends going to say when they read what my trusted secretary, my girl Friday, my good right hand allegedly thinks about me? Oh, Mr. Sands, they can't print this. I'll stop it immediately. You'd better if your job means anything to you. Uh, yes, sir. Tony, how dare you come here after what you've done? I know, I know. You've, uh, you've seen the proofs. And so has everybody else. If this is your idea of a joke... Believe me, Susie, it isn't. The first I knew about it was this morning when I discovered this in my pocket. This is the stuff you okayed. Obviously, I sent him the gag stuff by mistake. Well, what are you doing here? Why should you down a new feature magazine? Well, uh, uh, I'm afraid it's too late. Too late? Well, look, as soon as I discovered my mistake, I, I called Marshall, the editor. He told me 12 o'clock was a deadline for changes, and, well, he was locking up the forms when I called. Well, you just have to have him unlock them. But it's not as easy as that. Each form has 16 pages. If you tear out a story, you have to replace it with something. Respace. It takes hours. Now, believe me, the only person who could stop this story now is the old man himself, Walter Light, the publisher. Well, call him. Oh, look, Susie, we wouldn't stand a chance. He isn't going to listen to a little reporter like me or a one-shot contributor like you. Why, he's one of the most important men in the country. There is something you can do. You can get out of here, and I never want to see you again. of New Feature Magazine. Miss McNamara, your comings and goings are of the slightest interest to me. Oh, my, I haven't time to explain. Just trust me. Will you trust me? And I told everybody I know to buy a copy of New Feature Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> It's Mrs. Birch. Oh, Mrs. Birch. Well, I'm Susan McNamara, an international artist, and it's very important that I see Mr. Light immediately. If you'll see my secretary. Well, there isn't time for that. Well, then, if you'll tell me just what you want to see Mr. Light about. Well, there isn't time for that either. You see, I'm a secretary, too, so I know that routine. <laughs> well, then, if you're a secretary yourself, you must realize I just can't let everybody see Mr. Light. He's an extremely busy man. Oh, yes, I understand. But you see, this is extremely urgent. Uh, Mrs. Birch, did you ever belong to the secretary's club? Why, yes. But that was a long time ago. Well... <laughs> That's the distress signal, isn't it? Yes, yes. S-A-S, save a secretary. And never did a secretary need saving more. <laughs> Mr. Light is on the telephone to Rome. I'll let you see him as soon as he finishes. Oh, I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. And Rome is off. Paris will be on in five minutes. I'll sandwich you in between them. Oh, thank you. So that's how it happened, Mr. Light. It was a silly, practical joke for which I wasn't responsible. Except instead of writing the story yourself, you hired a ghostwriter. Yes. A ghost that'll haunt me for the rest of my life if you print that story. <laughs> but, Miss McNamara, the forms are locked. We're ready to go to press. In order to throw this story out now, it would be many hours delay, disrupt our schedule, and cost a great deal of money. But it can be done. You've done it before. In the case of a big news break, yes. But... Well, an earthquake, for example. But this is an earthquake. A rather personal one, I imagine. Besides, uh, in its way, it's uh, rather a funny article. It'll sell magazines. Oh, Mr. Light, something as cruel as that isn't funny. Besides, it isn't true. Mr. Sands doesn't treat me as an outcast. He treats me as a partner. That's rather well put. Uh, isn't the others are partners, too? So, junior partners. 
Why, Violet Praskins is the, is the first line of defense in our office. And Tommy Simpson, he's a wonderful boy. His name may not mean much now, but it will in the years to come when it's in gold letters in the door of his own office. His own office? Go on, Miss McNamara. So when it comes to handling a man like Peter Sands, I, I don't use deception or subterfuge. A little honest flattery, perhaps, when, <laughs> such as telling him he has the legs for it when I want him to wear Bermuda shorts to the office. <laughs> but mainly it's a question of knowing him as only you can know a man with whom you've been closely and happily associated for the best ten years of your life. Now, if you had only written what you've just told me... You mean it's as simple as that? Well, perhaps we can use part of it as a correction for next week's issue. Oh, but next week is too late, Mr. Light. If you print that story this week, Mr. Sands will be the laughing stock of this town and I'll be out of a job. Couldn't you do it this week? I'm sorry, Miss McNamara, but you're asking the impossible. But you're the man who can do the impossible. Oh. Well, I suppose it's difficult for you to understand the problems of a mere secretary. Paris is on the phone, Mr. Light. I'm sorry, Miss McNamara. Thank you. Dubois? Now, what about that cabinet crisis? <laughs> Call me back as soon as you find out. Wouldn't surprise her to know that I started here as a mere secretary. <laughs> Seated, my lady. <laughs> I have bought 100 copies. I'm sending them to all our clients. Well, what do they print? You haven't seen it? Read it, partner. Boy, I could just see my name on that office door. But it's just what I told Mr. Light in his office. Oh, there's even that thing about the Bermuda shorts. <laughs> oh, I'm embarrassed. Why should you be embarrassed? <laughs> if I am not. <laughs> well, you do have nice legs. Uh, and these just came for you. For me. No. Oh, aren't they lovely? I am finally convinced that practical jokes are completely unpractical. But how did you do it? Tell me. Yeah, how did you do it? I understood they were ready to go to press. But I don't even know myself. Did you see this blurb by Light? These articles by six well-known secretaries have the personal endorsement of Mr. Walter Light, the publisher, who himself started out his career as a secretary. As a secretary. As a secretary. That's it. What, Susie? Tommy, would you mind doing me a big favor? Susie, for you, anything. Oh, now, would you take these roses up to Mr. Walter Light at the new feature magazine? Sure. Mm -hmm. And when you give them to him, make this sign. Here, here, so. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> that secretary talk for you're the most. <laughs> Mr. Light will understand. 